Hi, I'm Alexis. Hi, I'm Sky. Welcome to volume number two of the Northeast Mountain Bike Report. We're at the Cycle Loft in beautiful Burlington, Massachusetts. In today's show, we're going to take you to the 2007 US Open of Mountain Biking. We're going to bring you to the pits, get some interviews, and we're going to take you to the finish line so you can watch the pro men and women do their stuff. Also, we'll introduce Roz Puglio of the Boston Team Lunachicks and head over to see Frank Diesel and the boys at the Diesel Bikes D-Day event. On top of that, the Cycle Loft is going to show us some bike styles that are perfect for New England riding. But before we get to that, let's go back to the US Open. At the US Open, we met up with Sean Horatio, the general manager of Diablo Freeride Park. Sean gave us some history of the US Open, as well as some insight into the future of freeriding downhill in Eastern Resorts. Take it away, Sean. Basically in 2003, Diablo Freeride Park started the US Open to kind of fill in the gaps where some of the other um, downhill and gravity events were maybe lacking. Um, we felt that we could offer a, a World Cup class event with a top pro purse in a location that's very convenient for athletes and spectators to attend. Since 2003, basically, we took a unique format in, for mountain biking using a pro open format, which basically allows East Coast and local rippers to compete against the world's best pros. When we designed the, uh, the US Open course, basically, we tried to mix up the various elements of uh, downhilling. Um, we have lots of technical rock garden sections, but we also have some high speed sections to try to offer racers a mix of East Coast versus West Coast and see who comes out on top. As we all know, free riding is definitely in a boom right now, and especially on the East Coast, resorts are really starting to pick up its popularity. There's various resorts on the East Coast now offering downhilling, terrain features, and uh, it's my opinion that we're all doing well. I think the sport of mountain biking right now is real similar to snowboarding in the 90s, where terrain parks for snowboarding were in its infancy stage and not many resorts were accepting it. Um, but with the freestyle boom in snowboarding, uh, we can all clearly see where the sport has gone. Uh, I think mountain biking is in that now, where some resorts are starting to offer these features on an advanced level, and other resorts are really trying to get into it, trying to catch up with the resorts that are currently offering it. At Diablo, we're fortunate to have a tight network of very supportive sponsors within and out of the industry of mountain biking. Uh, it is with this pleasure that we're able to offer the US Open and the athletes of the US Open probably the richest cash purse in downhill mountain biking in North America. We also catered to the amateur athletes where Iron Horse was uh, generous enough to offer two Iron Horse Sunday Elites as first place prizes. Basically that's $9,000 worth of product right there just for two athletes to go home with some really quality products. Thanks Sean for the insight on the history of the US Open as well as the future of free ride and downhill on the East Coast. If you're in the market for a new bike, hopefully you made it to Diesel Bikes D-Day in Linwoods. In this case, D-Day stands for Demo Day, and we had an arsenal of bikes for everyone to try. If you needed further inspiration to ride, Sinister Bikes is in the house doing a jump jam. Here's Frank D to talk about the D-Day event and his club, Diesel Bikes. Hi, this is Frank DiBenedetto with Diesel Bikes, and we're here uh, at the D-Day event. Uh, this is our first mountain bike event held in Linwoods, in Lynn, Massachusetts. Uh, basically, our D-Day event here, what we're looking at, this is our first event, and we, we went and talked to the local community, and we got a bunch of manufacturers and a bunch of local shops to bring down bikes to this event. Uh, we're tallying roughly over about 70 bicycles. We have vendors such as Sinister Bikes, Cannondale, Iron Horse has showed up, KHS, which has been sponsored by uh, Salem Cycles. We have a host of other uh, local shops such as uh, Wheel Works, Western Cycles, Salem Cycles, JRA, Cycle Loft, uh, Seaside Cycles, Western Cycles, you name it, they're here. 16 vendor, uh, excuse me, 18 vendors, Red Bones for Food, three live bands, and uh, Sinister doing a Jump Jam show. It's just phenomenal. Uh, Diesel Bikes, we're just a local club right now that's based out of Lynn, Mass. 
And uh, we work with the city of Lynn to do uh, uh, different kind of trail maintenance and trail projects within Lynn Woods. And we're expanding our efforts right now to uh, actually look at holding events here in Lynn Woods and possibly other locations that we service, such as B&Ts up in uh, Gloucester and trying to work with some other local riding groups also. Uh, we're uh, three years old and every year we seem to gain a little bit more momentum and we hope this is going to be the first of many events to come. Thanks Frank, what a great event. Hopefully there's lots more to come. At the US Open, Alexis did a little pit tour in between practice runs. She checked out professional racers, as well as hung with Michael Tober and Dave Weagle of E13 Components. Let's check out the pit tour with Alexis. I'm here at the US Open with Fionn Griffiths and Kathy Pruitt. Fionn's from the UK and Kathy's from NorCal. What brought you guys to the Open and how do you feel about it this year? Uh, I decided to come to the US Open because uh, I haven't been here in a while. I missed last year from the World Cup scheduling and uh, obviously the prize purse, $5,000, kind of, you know, draws some of us to come here. And um, my, uh, bike, my bike sponsor, Jameis Bicycles, is uh, 50 miles from here in New Jersey. Yeah. And for me, it was kind of a last minute decision. I've been over in Lisbon uh, racing the, the downtown, which is a street race in Portugal. And um, yeah, just total last minute decision. We flew in on Wednesday, flying out on Sunday. Um, I guess the reason I came was I wanted to race Sabrina again. She's been going super fast this season and I just uh, wanted to kind of try and use her going fast to kind of step up my game and just keep me on form no, for the next World Cup. I was going to be here. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's why. Just chasing the money just like you just, you know, you just wanted to be the top, you know, American. So. What do you guys think of uh, the course? Oh, the course is just full of rocks, like the entire way down. And it's definitely not smooth and it's very challenging. You can add to that. Uh, I really like it. It's perfect, I think. It's uh, Which challenging, it's perfect. Yeah. It's fun, yeah. really fun. Yeah. I like the combination too, like how it goes fast and turning at the bottom and like super rocky straight at the top. Yeah, just charge through some rock sections and do your thing and hopefully come out on top at the bottom, you know? So I'd, I've never been here before, so I didn't know what the track was like, um, but the jump at the bottom, super easy as well. It's just total floater. Yeah. Just I, th I think that, uh, it's always cool to have a jump at the bottom for the wow factor. What do you guys think of the event as a whole, like the energy, the how they put it on, stuff like that? I dig the fact that uh, USA Cycling has nothing to do with the event. Um, that's super awesome because it's really simple, it's laid back. They gave us vouchers for food, like Saturday, Sunday. We just all ate lunch together. It was really just, you know, hang out, race, ride your bike. Yeah, I agree with what Kathy said. And I mean, yeah, they do take care of the athletes really well here. They put on food for us as well. Uh, we all just ate lunch together and that was awesome. It's nice to see uh, like a, a promotional company taking, uh, taking care of the riders. So, uh, I mean, they've done well with their sponsors as well. I think Toyota and um, who else is sponsoring this event? Who? Monster. Oh yeah, Iron Horse. Those guys, yeah. It's behind us. Obviously I'm not sponsored by them, but I'm sponsored by Norco. What do you guys think of the Open and how it was run this year? It's been run very uh, very well this year and previous years. This is our fourth year participating in the pit space and this is our third year sponsoring the event. We're mm -hmm. going to continue to do so for next year. It's a great, great event. Uh, brings a lot of top level international and national caliber athletes. Yeah all together in a very casual and very friendly atmosphere and this really uh, promotes and exudes a lot of uh, a lot of riding and racing action and overall I mean it's just a blast to come to. I mean you got, you remember both of you guys remember what it was like racing on the east coast like what six years ago seven years ago you know and we were all out here racing on grass hills and you know I mean all the big events were on the west coast and so it's just unbelievable to have something like this like right in our backyard you know the dirt's good the weather's great like and the, you know, an awesome part about it for me is, I mean, I love to come out and out during the event, you know, I can go up and ride 20, 30 different trails, you know, every day, all day, and get out and ride with so many people that like, typically I'd only get to ride with at Whistler or somewhere else, you know, but everybody's right in our backyard and it's just awesome, you know? Um, it seems like you guys have a lot of riders here. I see E13 chain guides everywhere. Um, do you have a lot of top caliber sponsored riders at the event? We have an incredible uh, roster this year. Uh, the men's and women's field and we're very proud and very feel very honored to work with all all types of uh, levels of athletes and from Sabrina Jonier and Sam Hill all the way down to the beginner rider who just loves to go ride his bike 
Yeah. And it's just, that's that was us. That is still us. I mean, yeah. Dave and I, we just took a few runs and just had a blast riding. And we can, you know, we, uh, we really can relate to the up and coming riders. You know, we have an extra pit space just for people to hang out because we know how it is and how rough it can be when the sun's beating down on you or the rain. Yeah, yeah, and totally. that's, you know, that's why we had it. It's not, we didn't always like own a bike company and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And you go somewhere and you just don't have the tools you need to do something simple and it makes your life so hard, you know, and it kind of makes your day like less fun. And, you know, if we can take 20 seconds, it's going to make somebody's whole day. Like, that's the best thing in the world. That's what it's all about, you know? Uh, what do you guys think of this year compared to the years before? Uh, it's pretty similar I think a little better draw there's a lot of people coming in from all different countries and stuff and the course is fun it's tech it's rough it's got some fast sections and all in all it's pretty good yeah it's pretty much the same layout as it's been for the past uh, I don't know four or five years so just a little different this year it hasn't rained yet what do you guys think of it compared to other races um, other series in the East Coast I think um, I don't know, I think there's a lot of real good race series going on these days on the East Coast. And uh, what's cool about this is just uh, a pretty big event for New Jersey. So what makes this one different is just how many people it draws from all the different countries and stuff. It's got a little bit more of a, a pull internationally, which makes it fun because everyone gets to come from all over the world to see what we get to ride all the time. So uh, I like it because it gives you an idea where you stand in the in the community if you're not somebody who travels and does the national so they kind of come to you between this and mount snow it, i i like both a lot i like this place because it's there's always fast people that come for the open now what do you think draws the people from around the world to come uh the cash there's a pretty hefty cash purse i don't even know what they're throwing down for a win this year but when there's three zeros on the end of a couple places usually people come because you know it's not a sport that you typically get rich in so if you throw a big cash purse out there people will come for it um, is there any part of the course that you guys would want to take out do you like the whole course do you like the berms and the drop at the end and stuff like that everything I love it it's one of the courses that I like the best here and they use a lot of pieces of it throughout the year in their different race races that they have here so it's it's good thanks Alexis that was a kick-ass pit tour Next up, our correspondent Karen Egan met with Roz Puglio of Boston Team Lunachicks. Welcome back to the show, Karen. Thanks, Guy. We really appreciated Roz taking some time away from that event to chat with us about Team Lunachicks. Check out what the Boston Team captain had to say about the Ambassador Program as well as what these ladies are doing locally. Team Lunachicks was a program born out of the success of the women's pro mountain bike team. In 1999, Luna created the Women's Pro Mountain Bike Team and had unparalleled success in the mountain bike circuit. Allison Dunlap won the World Championships in 2001. Marla Streb was a two-time national downhill champion. And what Luna realized was that this team was creating a momentum around women's cycling. So they decided to expand upon the concept and create an ambassador program which is what Team Luna Chicks is. So Team Luna Chicks is a regional program that encourages women to become involved in the sport of cycling as well as running and triathlon. So for the Boston team, what we do in our community is we have women come out on weekly mountain bike rides and we have them practice different techniques, different skills. We also lead road rides to help women feel comfortable and our mountain bike rides take place in the Middlesex Fells in Stoneham and we ride for about an hour and a half each Wednesday night. And what we do is we aim to go out and not go out for a hard hammer fest ride, but we try to go out at a casual pace, stop at different obstacles that may give people of all levels some trouble. So even if someone is really experienced, we can help them maybe you know practice their finesse or they can help some of the newer riders. So we, again, we really try to aim to build that supportive, welcoming community and bridge the gap between newer and experienced riders. In addition to the mission of getting more women involved in cycling, we also have a broader mission that appeals to most women. We also aim to raise money and awareness for the Breast Cancer Fund. And the Breast Cancer Fund is an organization that seeks to identify the environmental causes of breast cancer. In addition to just going out and encouraging women to become more athletic, we also try to encourage women to be more socially responsible, whether it's through breast can the Breast Cancer Fund or the environmental causes associated with the Breast Cancer Fund. And so 
it's it's not just about it's not just about the bike to borrow the phrase from Lance Armstrong. It really is more than that and we really are out there for more than just cycling. Hi, my name is Ryan DeRoach. I'm the service manager here at the Cycle Off. I'm here to talk to you about some of the great mountain bikes that Specialized sells for all the free ride options that you have here in the Northeast. Here's the Specialized Enduro SL. Brand new bike from Specialized, new design, everything about it is all new. Um, great for your mostly cross country riding, but a little bit of light free ride riding. This bike features the Future Shock front and rear from Specialized, has five inches of travel front and rear, also has XO rear derailleur, XT crank, and Megora Marta brakes. Great for all of your riding in the Northeast. Um, perfect for a little bit of downhill, but mostly cross country and trail riding. So this is the next step up um, in free ride technology. They, this is the Enduro, basic Enduro, that comes with uh, mostly X9 components, Truvative cranks, Fox DHX Air rear shock, and a Marzocchi front fork. This will allow you to do 60% downhill, 40% uphill, more focused towards the free ride genre, and it works a lot better for the more plushness that you're looking for. This is the next step in the more burly side of things. Uh, this is the big hit, again from Specialized. Um, features a Fox DHX coilover rather than the air from the Enduro. Gives you a little bit more of a burly setup, better feeling for the more plushness that you're looking for. Um, comes with a Marzocchi Triple Eight, uh, a little bit better for the downhill, a lot stiffer because it's a triple clamp, and it also has a 20 millimeter through axle, again a lot stiffer from the other ones. This also comes with Avid Juicy 5 brakes, and it also comes with uh, X9 components just like the last one, and a little bit more burly crank set setup. Um, what this does is gives you a little bit more of a free ride friendly, downhill friendly bike that is still trail rideable, but it's a little bit heavy for your cross country riders out there. This is the Specialized SX Trail. What this does is bumps you up from the big hit, gives you a little bit more trail rideability, also gives you a little bit more downhill ability. Reason being is because the trail rideability is up front here in the chain rings. Gives you two chain rings up front, so it gives you a little bit more gear options. Gives you a little bit lighter fork up front, which again gives you a little bit more trail rideability options. But overall, it's a much burlier bike. Able to go downhill much faster, much smoother, and allows you to have a lot more fun at Diablo or Highland or the other free ride parks that we've talked about. Last but not least, we have the Specialized Demo 7. This bike here will do everything under the sun. Mostly downhill, a little bit of cross country, but it's a little bit heavy for most of your cross country riders. But very pedalable. Has a single ring crank up front with the Truvative Husevelt cranks an XO rear derailleur, and an DHX rear shock. This bike is perfect for Highland, Diablo, any downhill mountain that you're going to go and rip it up. It can do hucking, it can do climbing, it can do anything that you put to it. it has a totem front shock with 40 millimeter stanchions, really, really stiff, and it has specialized proprietary hubs on it. Perfect bike for anyone that wants to go out and rip it all the time and not worry about their bike at all. There you have it. Those are all the bikes that you would ever need for Northeast style riding. Anything from light cross country all the way up to your full out downhill bike, free ride bikes, everything. Come on down to the cycle off, test ride your bikes. We have them all. Our final segment brings us back to the US Open where we see the top men's and women's finishes. Those top two are Bryn Atkinson and Sabrina Jeanier. Check out these sound bites. Thank you so much for coming out here. Yeah, this beautiful pair of 
Ok, you want me to keep my glasses on or take it off? Ok, oh, up here. <laughs> I'm Sabrina Genier, I'm from France, I'm 25 years old and I write for Monster Energy Aronauts. So that's my second time at the US Open now. Uh, I won it two years ago and came back again this year and <laughs> it was, we had a really good weekend all this, with the sun out, a little bit too hot, <laughs> but the track was really awesome. I really liked the speed we could get in it and I'm normally not a big fan of rocks, but uh, I think I did pretty good in the wood and have a lot of fun all weekend. So what brought you to the US Open? Why did you come here? Uh, because uh, Aaron also is a big sponsor of it, and so we're riding for them, and so they t told us to come here. And also, like, the price money made me want to come more. <laughs> so are you doing other races in the U.S. this, this season? Uh, not really. Like, I'm going home tomorrow, and I'm coming back for more and and I think that's it for the season. Cause the main race are mostly in Europe, so it's, it's not worth it to come here too often. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How's your run go, Brand? It was a little shaky, man. It took me a while to get into it. I just a couple of turns at the top, and I was just a little late on them, and made a couple of mistakes, and almost hit a tree actually, but didn't lose any time at all. But it was just, you know, like I don't know, just wasn't in the right frame of mind today, and got lucky, I think. <laughs> Getting looser than practice yesterday. You know what, well, I don't know man, it was, it kind of felt better to me this morning, you know, when we, when we rode out for practice. And uh, like, the, uh, it just seemed like all the dust had fallen into the little crevices that seemed, seemed to make all the noise, you know. So, I don't know, this morning it seemed really smooth and really grippy and just because a lot of the turns were, had good ruts in them, you know. Like even the people who really didn't know how to hold a line could just hit the berms, you know what I mean. And, that's probably what kept me together at the bottom. Sweet. So how's it feel to be five thousand dollars richer? Dude, it's good, man. Put a bit more money on the house and Thanks, dude. And there you have it, the winners of the 2007 U.S. Open. Thanks everyone for watching volume number two of the Northeast Mountain Bike Report. Big shout out to Cycle Loft and everyone else that made it a great show. We'll see you on the trail.